Hello, bonjour. Today, I'm giving you eight easy tips to save your money when you are painting with gouache. Let's see that. And did you see, this one is going much better now. Not finished yet, but she's improving. All right, so first thing, um, I know it may seem very, very obvious, but I'd rather place it here again because I see a lot of you are using too much paint when they are squeezing the tube. So a good point is to open your tube outside of your palette so you don't have a dry gouache on the palette and you will squeeze just a small amount of paint because it's really easier to add more later than to have a good blob, huge blob that will dry a lot. So think about that. Consider the size of what you have to paint and adjust the amount of paint you are using. Take it just enough so you have the creamy consistency, but not too much so it will dry too fast. All right, this one was easy. Let's move to the next one. Tip number two, and this is really crucial. You need to have this little sprayer, atomizer, whatever you want to call it. You just place tap water inside and you want to spray your paint on the palette. So, so not too much, just enough so the paint keeps its creamy consistency, the one we love about gouache. You will need a pair of scissors, some tape, any kind will do, a paper towel and baking paper, the one you can find in your kitchen, unless you don't cook at all. And in that case, you don't have it. Well, and then I'm sorry for you. But if you have some, this is a good one. Cut a little part of paper. We are just making some tries, so I don't need really a lot of paper. And I want to spray this quite a lot. Don't want to soak it in water, but very, very wet. Remove the water outside of it and place your piece of baking paper on top and tape that. And I will place a blob of paint directly on the baking paper. And I want to make another try with just the wet paper. So I'm soaking it again and placing the paint directly on the paper. Okay, so I have, let's say, the same amount of paint on the three parts, directly on the palette, on the wet paper, on the wet paper, plus baking paper on top of it. It's been two hours since I have left my blobs of paint drying. Um, this one was directly on the palette. And as you can tell, there is a lot of skin on top of the blob. So there is a lot of skin here. It's kind of completely dry. Here it's completely dry. If I put the skin aside, inside it's still creamy, but when you try to get the fresh paint inside, you get bits and pieces of the skin as well, and it's not a good thing. So I will change my brush because I want to be fair with each one. This one is on the damp paper, and actually the paper is still a bit damp, and there is a bit of skin on top of it as well, but less heavy than this one. And if I push the skin, there is something that is way more fresh than this one. The last one is on the baking paper on top of the wet paper. And if I open it, yeah, it's still very wet under. And there is also a slight skin. And inside it's really very, very creamy. Yeah. I think really those two are quite alike. So I think it's really obvious 
adding a bit of humidity under your paint is really important if you want to keep your fresh painting and especially if you are working for a long time. I'm quite fast at painting so I usually paint during one hour and a half at maximum. This is all I can do in one sitting. So my paint doesn't really have time to dry fully because I am squeezing small amounts of paint and reloading as long as I need it because I like the fresh, creamy consistency of gouache. And let's move to the next tip. And with the same idea of having a wet surface with baking paper on top, what you can do is something really handy that is homemade. This is a flat box with an airtight lid, well, so to speak. Uh, this one was a gift that I had when buying ham, you know, this is the size of a ham slice. I've cut out a piece of towel and you place this in the bottom, soak it in water, remove the excess water, have it here and place your baking paper on top. Works fine. The only issue is that your paper is a bit moving inside the box and it kind of bothers me, I would say. And if you don't have a ready-made box, you can buy Stay Wet Palette. This is meant for acrylic, but it works as well for acrylic gouache, sorry. And this is the same idea. You have a paper that you soak in water and then you place some kind of baking paper on top. What you can do also is keep your paint inside an airtight palette and you have different brands and different shapes and different sizes. This one is a very secure one. You, you know, you can flip it over and nothing will go outside. And this is really handy, very secure. And you have under, should have shown you before flipping out, you have a little part so you can secure your thumb inside and use it to paint directly outside. Never use it, not so convenient for me. And this one is really, really dirty. I know, but I'm using it, I would say daily. So what I do is I spray it this way once a week, maybe, and then place it in the fridge. This is the most important thing you can do. Is place all your palettes, stay wet, airtight, in the fridge. And you have another palette, this one, need a bit of spray, but I won't talk of it anymore because I made a special video for it somewhere. And if you have squeezed too much and you have a lot of paint left on your palette, and it's a bit dry and you cannot place it back in the airtight palette maybe. I have an idea for you and you have to follow the video here when I show you what to do with your leftover on your palette. If you have a tube that is squeezed in a strange way and you want to take back everything inside, you have this little tool that is really handy. You have different size, different shapes, but the idea is to squeeze your tube and push the paint inside. Not so easy to do because I have wrist issues actually. And this is really cool because you can push, push, push your paint until the end. And of course, it works for all kinds of tubes, even the toothpaste. And the last tip is when the paint is drying inside the tube, it happens. Uh, dif different brands are not equal regarding drying inside the tube, or maybe you have been using this tube for two, three, four years, I don't know, or it was a pure, poor quality. Sometimes things happen and you have this paint, for example, if I squeeze, it's almost impossible to get something from it. So 
So I want to take what is inside and place it in my airtight palette. And you will need a palette knife and a pair of scissors that you don't care about because it will be dirty, really. And then you want to cut the side of the tube and place something to protect your table and be careful when you open this because it's kind of cutting. And this is where it's really handy to have an airtight palette because I can place it inside and I will use the red box that is here and fill it with this paint so you can scrape the inside of the tube easily. And the good thing is I will be able to spray water inside and it will reactivate my fresh paint. And you always have a lot in the color here. And as I said, it's messy. <laughs> But I like to have my hands dirty from time to time because painting is also about being dirty. And that's it. That was eight tips to save your wash painting, either by preserving it at first, keeping it moist, or using your leftovers or using your dry paints. I hope this was helpful. And please let me know in comments if you are already using one of those methods. And maybe if you have another idea. I'd like to know. See you soon for another video. Bye bye. Au revoir.